Right, hi everyone. I uh, hope you continue to be safe and well. Back again with another uh, Beyond the Field of Play podcast. I'm, I'm so pleased to be talking to this, uh, this impressive young man uh, today. Again, another one of our alumni. I've kind of switched sports. Um, you know, I've, I've gone, down, gone down the rugby route today. I know, that, I know that he's not playing rugby anymore, but at the time at the college, he was playing um, for England Colleges. Uh, the side that they had at the college at the time was exceptional, national winners. Um, I love, you know, this age group in particular, I really enjoyed, you know, day-to-day -day dealings with them because of their character and because, you know, let's say at times they weren't, you know, they weren't, it was tough to control at times, but, you know, I, I really enjoyed that. And and there's there's been a few years, you know, gap now, but I've been following this this guy on, on social media um, really closely and, you know, he, he's... There's been some times where there's been some lows, some real lows. So obviously we've, we've spoken to other people about lows, but, you know, there, there, there'll be some lows, but also how, how he's turned it around. And, you know, it's an absolute inspiration. So again, I hope we can take some little bits from, from the story. So welcome, you know, welcome Brad Parker. Great to have you on. Mate. Appreciate the comments, mate. They mean a lot. Um, so we'll, we'll start from, you know, obviously, you know, college wise, kind of what's your story from, from being at college through to, to this present day, mate? So college, I would say still till this day was my best years I've ever had, uh, sport-wise and just, just being a kid. <laughs> um, so yeah, I finished up with the college. Um, that wasn't, I think that, that, was, that hit me harder than what I thought it would, because then you leave the reality of kind of playing sport four, four, four or five times a week to cutting it down and the routine and that goes, you've got to go and get into the real world, so to speak. Um, so yeah, I finished there, carried on to go and play rugby for a little bit and then I, I started branching into doing summers away. I think I remember my first summer was the last year. I mean, <laughs> you're winding me up about selling fish bowls. <laughs> that's, that's unlike me to wind people up. Yeah, go on. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, done, I ended up doing five or six years away. I realised that rugby weren't paying the bills. Um, I tried as hard as I could, but I just feel like I've loved with the sport when it changes and that. And then um, I went through. So, yeah, my so my nan died. Uh, I lost a baby and my friend got stabbed in the throat. Um, that was in the space of like three months. So I panicked. I didn't really know what to do. So I just went away again for another summer away to just escape everything. So subconsciously, everything that ever happened to me, from, from May until October, I never had to worry about it because I was just away for the summer. There was just drink, girls, and I was just distracting myself. And then I come back and then I realised I wasn't going away again and then I just did self-destruct mode. I just got uh, paranoia, depression. Uh, I had suicidal thoughts every morning I was waking up, you know, wishing I was hanging off the back of the door or begging, like crying to my mum, just begging her not to go to work so I didn't have to be in my own thoughts because I just didn't know what would go on. Um, and then, and then yeah, so I battled that for a bit. Uh, and then it, I just remember I just woke up one morning and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I need help. So I tried to do it on my own because I was always, you'll notice at school, I was always known as like the, the, a typical lad. Do you know what I mean? So no one, I never wanted to see anyone know that I was suffering and that. So I'd always put on a front for it. And then in the end, yeah, I just need, I just accepted that I needed help. So I went and like, spoke to my mum and dad and then they got me some help with the NHS and I had a counselling session and it done nothing. It was like, it was, they gave me a trainee nurse and that was it. There's no support in mental health for young people at all. Um, so then I literally just become obsessed with reading, uh, learning about your neurological side of your body, uh, the law of attraction, everything like that. So just little bits of hope and then I just realised that because I was I was I was going like a week without showering like I couldn't eat I couldn't do anything I, it would take me about four hours to get ready just to go down to as the my anxiety was so bad that I just didn't want to see people and pretend I was all right when I was just wasn't I was half the person so I just woke up one morning and I remember I just put one bit of washing away and where I was a little bit productive I then allowed myself because I was sleeping the days away I allowed myself to go back to bed then the next day I put a little bit of washing away, then I had a shower, then I went back to bed again. And then slowly, spending 10 hours a day in bed, cut down to four, cut down to three, started going back to the gym. My mate, 
best mate Jake would drive over to Hollingbury from Shoreham, pick me up, take me to the gym, finish there, and then drop me home just to make sure I went. So I had good people around me. And then, as I said, I'd just become obsessed. And then I, I remember I put something up on Instagram about struggling and if anyone needs to reach out. And then just since then, it become a passion of just, we don't realise how much our mind can achieve. Because we're programmed from a young age to be like, you're like, you'll be at school and you'll be like, well, you're never going to achieve that. Or you always dwell on the negative. And so instead, I just started to program my mind to constantly see the positive and everything. So when my nan died, I literally was like, I'll, I got to see her for the last week. But so I programmed my mind as hard as it was. I spent that week with her. Some kids never get the chance to even spend a week. They never know some of their family. So I'll, as soon as you do that, it's a positive. I'm, I'm so rich in so many ways compared to some others. So that just programs my mind to constantly see the positives and absolutely everything I possibly could. And I know people say, oh, it's impossible, but it's not. Like, I'm not saying straight away you've got to see the positives, but you've got to have your time to grieve like anyone does. Get as sad as you need to get, but then you've got to come out of it because everyone can help you as much as possible and tell you it's going to be all right. But when you're in them thoughts, it's only you that can bring yourself out of it. Do you know what I mean? So as soon as my mum and dad would go to work, it was on me to do, to get myself out of bed. They could ring me as much as they want, but I just couldn't answer. So then I realised the only one that could help was myself. And then I just started self-work every day, just writing down what I'm grateful for. And then I'd write a journal in the morning, how I felt. And then in the evening, I'd write how I felt. And then the next day, the next day, the next day, and then I could, I could start to piece together my days of what made me feel good. So if I had a bad day, I'd go back the next day and go, well, I felt good when I'd done that. I felt good when I'd done that. So I'm going to make my days look more like that. And then I started planning my days exactly what made me happy. And then I just come out of it. And then before you know it, I was just back to myself. And then I just, it just fell into the path of just helping people as much as possible. And then, yeah, it was just sort of escalated really. It started off just doing a few little posts on Instagram and that. And now, just set up well I went into personal training and then I finally found what I love doing so now I'm set up my own life coaching business and now I want to got a podcast channel on that and I just want to prevent as many people going through what I went through as much as possible so it could be I've helped numerous of people it could be from different ages achieving different things and it's just we get caught so up in our thoughts that when you're in your own head for so long you're your own worst enemy like you, you think there is no end in sight sort of thing it's it, it is a, an absolutely incredible story it was just you know i'm just in if i'm honest i'm in i'm in awe of just listening to what you know what you've just been through yeah i, I totally forgot about rinsing you for the um seasons <laughs> i do but that, that's so me uh no, that's all one, good man two, two for one fish bowls um <laughs> you know you it, it's those kind of things are, are, are a right passion passage and and yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head at the start when you said coming out of college was such a culture shock. Massively, because um, I, had, I literally had my, my routine. I was playing rugby six or seven times a week. So I'd have two games, you know, would be rugby 8.30 every morning. So I, w- I was programmed. I didn't know any different. And unless you go pro when you leave college, you, you've got so many hours in a day. Like, what, what are you going to do? You're meant to leave college and then go and got pressure to find a job so you're going doing from something you love to something you hate in such a short space of time and then I just wasn't prepared for it at all I don't know, I don't know how you can say you love those Mondays at 8 30 mate because the, the guys the guys and girls that train now in the afternoon do not know that they you know do not know what's going on I remember the 8 30 a.m 400 meter repeats and if you have oh, mate. Bit, you know look oh, honestly we, we could talk about this forever and we did say it off air didn't we that yeah. you know we all kind of keep this pretty streamlined but yeah, it, you, you're totally right, and 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 it's 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 stuff like what we're doing at the moment as as a college as a department. You know, there there are a few people out there to be honest that are a little bit lost. They don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, like you know, you you were you were an athlete first. Let's yeah. Be honest, an academic second. So, yeah, yeah, you, know, you, you, you completed your BTEC. You've done all right. Um, but you didn't have a you didn't have a desire to go to uni. So that nah, not fine, at all. But there wasn't there wasn't the kind of opportunities potentially at that time that there is now like apprenticeships and whatnot. To yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and, 
you know, it, it, it is a culture shock. So, you know, if there's anything to come out of this, if you're an individual um, of like 18 years old and, you know, there isn't a succession plan, it it might be a struggle for you. And, and, and there needs to be that, that support. And look, I, you know, you've mentioned it a few times and I know you've spoken about it being yourself. Um, and obviously you've probably done the reading in terms of like the grief response model and the different stages yeah, yeah. go through grief and that. And, you know, it's part of our syllabus. So, you know, pretty hot on it, but in terms of injury, but in terms of losing someone, you know, the, the support system you had, uh, I hope you don't mind me saying it, but the support system no, you course. had probably saved you. Yeah, massively. I mean, I've been, I had a lot of people when I was younger, I had a lot of people around me that I shouldn't have had around me. Mm. Um, so when I left college, I did go into a path of just that lifestyle of just doing what you could sort of thing. And then I, I slowly started to cut the certain people out. And now there's not one person in my phone book that I can't call if I need to ring them at one o'clock in the morning if I'm struggling. Do you know what I mean? So it, it is massively about the energies you've got around you. I'm so grateful for my mum, my dad's. Like even my granddad, um, my, to some of my closest pals, I still see it every single day. So it, is, it does come down to who you're around and you, you can't be afraid to talk. You literally just got to reach out. And if, if you feel you can't reach out, then, then people shouldn't be around you. Yeah, look, I, that, that's a great point. And, it, and it's just stuff that, you know, we, and, and, and again, I'll, it's, it's just little things I'm hearing you say and I'm picking up on them. And, and like the thing about, look, you were, and you still are, you know, we used to call it, didn't we, a Bacardi Breezer. You're a geezer. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, I'm getting memories flooding back now. So, you know, from, from that point of view, that's the front. It's the chest out. It's the, yeah, that's you know, it. the, it's the swagger. It's, you know, yeah. Yeah, Brad, you know, Brad's got this shield of armour around him. You know, nothing will phase him. Um, yeah, massively. But, but we all have our, and, it, and it's very true, especially in a, in a situation like this. And, and obviously the reasons why I'm doing these talks is I want this to last beyond when we get out of what we get out of and we are going to get out of it and I'm as positive you yeah. know, in the same league as your positivity but I'm, I'm trying to be as positive as possible yeah yeah, yeah. It, is, it is important to understand that you are going to have bad days it's, and, it's, and, and it's you know it, it's, it's not normal to go through life and, and have a positive day as much as possible and I used to put on this lad front so much. I remember my two best mates. They never in a million years thought they'd see me break down. But I was in my last season in Ibiza and I broke down like a little bitch. But I'm so in touch with my emotions now that I know exactly who I am as a person. I know, ex I know exactly my thought processes. I know what I want around me. And if I didn't go through all of that, I wouldn't be here today to be able to say that. So there's nothing more of being a man than there is just purely knowing what's going on in your head. A lot of people shy away from the fact of it. It, shows, it doesn't show weakness, mate. It, it doesn't, because it, make, it makes you a hundred times stronger. And, 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 and I think it's a theme that's run through all of the talks I've done so far with some inspirational people, and, and you're exactly the same, you're in that bracket, mate, is that how powerful the mind is. Um, so in a, in a positive sense, but also yeah. a negative sense. And it's just, yeah, kind yeah. Of, as you say, you know, channeling that that mindset to, you know, and, and just just getting those small wins. And I will ask for some advice in a bit from you, obviously, yeah. from your situation. But those sw those small wins are so important because I don't, you know, I, I read somewhere it might be defunct now, but it kind of takes 21 days to create a habit. Or well, my um, habit, yeah. Yeah, it takes less to break them, um, as we know. But again, it's just those little those little bits so, um, that add up. The, the way that the way that I I program it to my clients is we're at our happiest when we're progressing. You'll you'll never you'll never ever see someone I believe anyway that are down and you say something like what's going on? Oh, everything's going all right. But like, it's when things become static. So when we're progressing, we're at our happiness because we're winning. It's baby steps. It's little wins. It's often. So you, we don't we live at hundred miles an hour with society these days. So it's like you achieve one thing. And, so I'm, I'm guilty for, I don't even register it. I'm like, right, what's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? And then we just have, we've just got to slow down and just realise there's people that love to be in the position we are now. And it's just, it's how we talk to ourselves. So some people are like, oh, I've got to do this or I've got to do that. I get to do this. I get to do that. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's how we talk to each other. It's just, it's, it's the posture. It's, it's little things that we can do in our own neurological system and our day-to-day -day stuff 
that can program us to literally set ourselves up to win. So like when you wake up and you little things, you're feeling a little bit down and oh, you, you haven't got a text from a certain person or today's not going the right way. While you're running that tap, your toothbrush underneath it, and then you might go and have a chat with someone and that walk was still running. There's a kid on the other side of the world that's got to travel eight miles and would love a bit of that water that you've got running out the tap. You see what I mean? So I'll visualize things like that every morning and then I'll bring my, my it brings your gratitude, it brings you down to earth and into the present moment. Of, you are so grateful for having little things in the mornings and we take for granted every single day that are so powerful that people dream of. And this this is why I'll say it like dogs are the happiest people in the world because in their heads, you see a little bubble and it's just the owner. That's their only worry, it's just one thing. But then if you put us next to them, we've got job bills, relationships, every, we've got so many more other things that really, how important is it? Like, do your risk assessment on it all. And if we just channel our brain to realize what's important in front of us, then that's, that's when the anxiety, that's when the depression, that's when the happiness, it all just starts going in the right way that you expect it to. So, so yeah, so I, I think, yeah, looking at that, it's, it's very much, and, I, and I'm sure you've done a lot of it, it's very much a reflective practice. Yeah, uh, massively. And, and at the same time, you know, that, that self-talk being extremely positive and especially in this situation, look, you know, I'm, I'm teaching from my bedroom, but I'd rather be teaching from my bedroom than being on, my, being on a hospital bed on a ventilator. Yeah, so, and, you know, and there you go, and, that, and that's enough to literally trigger you straight away that, whoa, I'm so much more lucky than a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, so, as I say, there, there's some real nuggets and we'll, we'll, we'll ask for some bits in a minute. But um, explain your, explain your new business then, mate. Um, you know, I'm, I'm so, you know, I, as people will see me on social media, I'm massively proud of my current students or our current students, but I'm massively proud of what, you know, people go on to do in society, like having a chat with you today, you know, being being positive, being successful. So what, what are you up to at the moment, mate? What's the plans for the future? So, yeah, so as I said, when I left college, I, I, left a, I lived a very selfish lifestyle. Um, one that was just that playboy lifestyle was going away. I was earning money certain ways. I was just doing everything. It was just all about me. So when I had the breakdown, it was a massive reality check. So I went into personal training um, and now I've just gone yeah, into life coaching. So I want to just take people's lives to that whole that that new whole new level like I open their mind up so much that the perception of life is just completely different so I've got clients they check in we have a zoom call once a week they get morning routines to do if they've got problems then we make sure their tar sheets specifically for them so we know exactly throughout the whole week if they're working towards exactly what we want them to because if we've got a goal and every single day we're not working towards the end thing. We've got to change what we're doing in the days. But we become creatures of habit. We just wake up, same route to work, do the same thing. So wake up, drive a different way to work, change that energy, different types of music you're listening to. So I'll go proper programming to the brain of how we can just do something so simple that has such a massive, massive impact. And um, it's just become an obsession. Like there's nothing better than waking up and just making people's dreams a reality really so it's early days but I'm, I'm feeling i've had such an amazing response on it so i'm feeling very positive about it and uh it, yeah it's, so it's um you know it's almost a, a vocation and i think you know it's a it to a, to a sense it's a bit like teaching and, and I yeah think, um you know I, I don't do it for the money i do it for the no. of, you know looking at people developing them and then they go on to to their to their different things and obviously you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of you, mate, and what, what you're doing, and I'm proud of all the, all the guys and girls that are out there doing what they need to do. No, I appreciate okay. that. Well done. We'll, we'll, we'll follow that closely and we'll plug it as we can. Um, so let's get down to the nuts and bolts of it. Um, in terms of any bits of advice, you've given loads, but just to kind of maybe summarise or pick some, pick some key bits, what, you know, first question is, what kind of advice would you give um, a student maybe just about to leave college or, or a student in their first year of college, what kind of advice would you give them currently in this, in this situation, but, you know, looking forward to looking forwards in terms of the future? I would, I would just say don't, as I'm not, and it, everything, this is easier said than done, but mm. I'm sat here now and I've found my path. So I, my advice back to the students would be don't stress and don't panic. You know, you've got people like these, 
like Jeff Bezos, Walt Disney, Oprah Winfrey, David, they didn't find their path until he was about 38. You know what I mean? JK Rowling, about 23, something like that. So we all find our path, what we want to do, but it's only going to happen when you're not stressing and forcing situations. You know what I mean? So just, just go with your gut with everything and just, just make sure everything you're doing day to day makes you happy. Because if anything COVID's taught us is things could be taken away from us like that. Do you see what I mean? So just find your groove of what makes you happy is exactly what I do. And when you, when you find your purpose and you find your why, why you're here and why you want to do what you want to do, that is when you'll find what you want to do in life. As soon as you find your why, that is your motivation completely. But you know that, that that's powerful, mate. And obviously in this current situation, um, it's sort of, I can't remember if I said it back in back in your day. I know I think I used TCIB, but you know, kind of control the controllables in the sense of you know what's exactly. in front of you, what's in front of you, what can you control? I can't control the virus. I can't control. What is it? We're now up to the Finnish variant or the Californian variant, all that stuff. I can't control yeah, yeah, yeah. it. What I can control is what's in front of me. I can control my routine. I can control my work. I can control getting the best grade on the assignment, asking questions, asking for help. All that kind of stuff really important. Um, it's all out of our hands. Yeah, that is, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's accept so acceptance is the hardest thing that the human ego can take because it's literally just so if you can master acceptance, you can master a lot of things. Everything is out of our hands at the moment. So don't stress about it. No one's going to have a go at you because it's not going a certain way. If you stress about it now, and then it happens down the line, you're putting yourself through the same pain twice. So it's like you literally just got to realise what you can control, what you can't, you can't control it. It ain't your fault. <laughs> it's, it's as simple as that. So it's just relaxing and just realising that just acceptance and there's no rush for nothing. And there's no pressure and there's, we bring a lot of anxiety on ourselves because we feel like we've got to have everything solved and you haven't. I'd, I would finish my last summer in Ibiza when I was about 23, I think it was, something like that. I didn't find my path. I just kept running away. But I wish that I just stood, I just, do you know what? I don't wish that I didn't do anything different, to be fair. I take that back because I found my path and I'm here now doing exactly what I love doing. So... So that's perfect, mate. So just to finish off, would there be, I know I've asked it to everyone, but would there be any advice to your 17-year-old self? Or is it just, you know, you kind of, you, you've got what you've got, you went through your yeah. bad times and now you're at the other side and you're uh, bossing it? Yeah, I mean, if I could give advice to myself, it would be, no, nah, I, would, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. Mate, Maybe one little hiccup we had in the last year that we won't go into, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> but... Um, Apart from that, nothing. Just enjoy, enjoy every day. Literally yeah, enjoy every day and you yeah. will find your path. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. it's, it's important you've got to realise why you're here. And soon, as soon as you realise your why, that, that everything else just falls into play. You attract every single other thing. Amazing, mate. Um, you know, best of luck with everything. This has been absolute, you know, eye-opening for me. I'm going to continue to follow your progress. Absolutely love talking to you, mate, and having you on. And hopefully, again, you know, people take one little thing from this. You know, we've done our job. It's like, you know, it's the vocation of ours and I can see the passion, you know, coming through the screen and yeah. keep, doing the, keep doing the amazing work, mate. So I really appreciate you having been on. No, I appreciate it, Dave. Thank you massively for having me, mate. And uh, I wish you all the best over there. And uh, say hello to Ben for me and Vanessa. Well, <laughs> do. Still there. Take care, mate. Nice one, mate. See you later.